In this episode, we talk fear, verse of the day, and we'll look at some crap I got hanging out on the table. Welcome to another episode of the Gideon's Tactical Show. Well, here we are back after a one week vacation. I decided last week to uh, postpone the show. It was Thanksgiving weekend. I just wanna spend time with family uh, and have a good time and uh, decided to go that route and uh, took a vacation week. So we're back at it here, the Gideon's Tactical Show. So glad to be back with you guys. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, we did at uh, the GT household. We uh, hung out with the family. My side of the family lives in, in town. Uh, so we hung out with them on Thanksgiving Day, uh, did all of our fun stuff and uh, traditions and all that. And then um, Black Friday, we opted to go outside. My son and I went uh, uh, hiking. It was an awesome time with a few friends. Really, really good time uh, instead of doing all the Black Fr Friday craziness. And then uh, just hung out for the weekend Saturday, just relaxed and you know took a breather. I, I needed it so badly. So um, that was kind of our weekend. Hopefully you guys had a great Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, yeah, looking forward to just uh, December and all of the friends and family and get togethers and uh, looking forward to enjoying it, not getting stressed out by the season and, and all that and just enjoying being with family. So um, looking forward to the stuff that we got today. Want to remind you guys as we jump to it uh, to always check out the links below, particularly in this gift giving season, when you guys use those hyperlinks that we offer to you below like Amazon Blade HQ for any purchases that you're looking at, regardless if it's in this video or any other, uh, we get that small percentage back, helps me continue to do what we do here, make content. Um, and it's just uh, a free for you and an easy way to support what we do here. So thank you guys for using those uh, hyperlinks that we offer to you below. And so uh, with that, we're going to talk about um, some fears here for a second. Uh, just literally popped in my mind. I came downstairs. I was like, what am I going to talk about for the show this week? And it came into my mind and um, there's just some things that uh, I think about. Some of them are just silly, irrational fears that uh, I wanted to share with you. Um, and then some more realistic ones that could possibly happen. And what are we going to do you know, about it? And, and some ideas on what to do about those things um, because they might apply to you, some of the stuff I'm about to talk about. So we'll jump right into it. Uh, first thing is an irrational fear. If you were to ask me, like, what's the one thing in life that you would just be like silly, kind of silly, but something that would really bother you? And... Um, you know, maybe it's a fear uh, of arachnophobia, you know, spiders. It could be all kinds of different stuff for you. Fear of small sp spaces, afraid of the dark. Um, for me, it's, if you were to ask me, like, what's one of the scariest pictures in my mind, it's scuba diving and swimming uh, and seeing, like, a big shark coming right at you out of out of the dark, you know, and and out of out of the blue, the deep blue, seeing a shark coming straight at you, and, and you know they're coming for you. They're not like just kind of hanging out. I mean, even if they came hanging out, but like you know, missile laser beam right at you, and you know we're getting hit by a shark here in like two seconds. That is just something I never want to encounter. Never want to have to think about. Um, it, it, I know the percentages are super low. You're more likely to die in a car accident, you know, or like all the different stuff that could, that is more likely than getting, you know, attacked by a shark when you're swimming. But um, it's just, that would just be the, like, oh, it's the, like scariest thing to me uh, to see a big giant shark swimming right at me. I think, and I think part of it is because you're out of your element. You know, you're not on land where you can move around. I mean, I'd rather get attacked by a bear or a bobcat, you know, or whatever than a, a shark. Um, just because, or excuse me, not Bobcat Mountain Lion, you know, something like that. Something extremely deadly on land. Uh, a, a tiger, you know, whatever. At least I'm on land and I have, like, it's a, it's a, not, it's not a two-dimensional, but you know what I mean? There's like, it's not 360 degrees, at least there's ground below you. Whereas in the ocean, you're 360 degrees, particularly if you're submerged somewhat, of angles of attack and, you know, like coming up behind, I mean, yeah, and it's not your natural environment, you know, you're not on land. So, uh, yeah, that would be my, uh, an irrational fear of mine, uh, but something that I've always thought of, if you were asking me what's the scariest thing you can think of, that would be it. And so now I have two more things that are more realistic that I'm, I'm concerned about that you could put in the fear category, but things that we can do to change them. And the first one has to do with kids. If you are thinking about having children, if you have children, um, 
the the thing that you always want to do, you know, when you have kids and your goal in life is to prepare them to be independent and succeed in life. That is your goal. That is your mission now. You know, I have two sons, one's four months, one's two and a half years old. They are amazing boys. Um, and really, particularly with the GT Juniors, two and a half, and really his personality coming out and he's learning, he can talk, you know, he, can, he and I can communicate. I understand about 90% of what he says, um, you know, and he's picking up on everything. Um, the thing that scares me is like, I don't want to turn around and him be 18, 19, 20 years old and I'm launching him into the world and him to either be just a tool and like no one likes him because he's a total jerk and I did not raise him properly. Um, or for him to not have the, the mental capacity and the, the mental fortitude and the faith to know that he can succeed and if he puts his hand to to something, he's gonna do well in life and give him those tools of confidence, of being able to communicate well with the world, um, of being able to take criticism. Uh, that's a huge one, man, in this day and age, so many like, oh, you're a winner of everything and there's no such thing as like losing and you know, you're always the best. It's like, no, there, there's a right and a wrong way to do things. There's a good and a bad, there's evil and good and uh, there are decisions that you make that will benefit you, there are decisions that you make are, that are really stupid and that will really hurt the rest of your life. So you want to make wise decisions. And we all make mistakes. I've made plenty in my life. But to equip my sons uh, in that capacity, and, and I, that would be like something I don't want to do. I do not want to turn around in my life and go, wow, I did not equip them properly because of either laziness on my part. You know, I sat there and spent too many hours in front of the TV or I spent too many hours holding my phone and goofing around with that or out doing my own thing, doing my own hobby and not bringing them along with it. You know I mean? Whatever it is. And so that's just something that I want to encourage all of us to do and challenge each one of us is what are we doing to ensure that our children have all the tools to succeed, to uh, take criticism, to adapt, to be willing to change in their lives so that when they reach adulthood and and go into their, their world, that they have, um, you've given them all the tools to succeed. Now it's up to them whether or not they'll use them properly and you know uh, create a life for themselves worth living. But um, uh, that's my goal and that's my desire in life. And uh, I mean, two simple things for myself and my wife that we really strive for and you don't have to come up with huge game plans. It's great if you do, um, and all start sorts of different ideas. And I'd love to hear you guys. You know, put comments below if you're like, "Hey, man, this one thing really worked with our kids." Um, you know, it's things like that. I'm always learning. I always want to learn more and different ideas and simple things. But I always, I always try to keep it simple. Is t quality time spent? I mean, that is like no. N numero uno is quality time spent. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It can be playing games. It can be building blocks. It can be taking walks. I always, I mean, it's as simple as like today, the, the mailbox is like, I don't know, 150 yards away from our house. Um, and I could probably go down there and back in about a minute. And you know, it's after dinner, we're wrap, we're wrapping down. It's time, you know, it's time for my son GT Jr. to go to bed. But I'm like, you know what? I, I'm gonna take him. Yeah, it takes me two extra steps. I gotta put a coat on him. I gotta put his, his little uh, um, slippers on him. But I'm gonna walk with him down to the mailbox and spend five, and it's gonna take us five minutes because he walks a lot slower, you know, because of his little legs. Um, but the, we're gonna take a walk together. And so that's exactly what we did. We took a little 150 yard back and forth walk down to the mailbox and back and the whole time, you know, he's just a little chatterbox and he's talking about pickup trucks and his Hot Wheels and Optimus Prime and like everything in his life right now. But it's this quality time of five minutes that I spent with my son that would have been way easier just have him play in the house and, you know, just go get the mail real fast and come back and, you know, whatever. But it's, it's those small things that can matter and make such a difference in our kids' lives, particularly at younger ages in my opinion and that's what I really believe. And the second part is really instilling at a very young age as, long, as soon as they can communicate, as soon as they can understand, my son included, uh, your values, the things that you value in life, your faith, um, you know, uh, principles, whatever it is in you, for you that you stand upon that that gives you a solid foundation is begin to instill those. Don't think that they're just going to like learn it osmosisly and particularly if it's something that's not um, necessarily welcomed in today's society, meaning um, uh, thoughts, uh, thoughts, ideas that in today's society you'd think there would be so much freedom, but there's actually so much um, um, 
closure to have to and, and not really a platform to have uh, a difference of ideas and the discussion of ideas um, seems to be getting stomped on more and more and if you don't think a certain way then shut up and sit down instead of hey let's talk about it and I want to hear what you have to say and then I want to give my point and let's let let's talk let's discuss you know the the battle of ideas it's the battle of shut up and sit down um, so uh, uh, I, I just encourage you to um, teach your children the, your values, your principles from a young age and, and um, continue to reinforce that in healthy ways of what you believe, what you think is right. Um, so that when they have, if you particularly if you're seeing success in your life, um, like myself and my wife have, and how those values have performed, you know, look at my life and is that not something that you would want, son or daughter? Uh, and if it is, then, then these are the things that have gotten me here, I think is a huge, huge thing, particularly as they grow older, but even from a very young age. So those are just two things that can help um, set your children up to succeed so you won't have to be afraid of how they're going to be able to live their lives and will they succeed once they get out in the world. The other thing real quick is financial stability, you know, like I think everybody worries about money, but particularly for me personally, it's the long term. You know, when when my wife and I are 60, 70, 80, 90, you know, the the last uh, third of our our life basically, will we have enough to live on and live the life that we want to? And um, there are simple things that you can do now. You know, make savings accounts for yourself. Do a percentage away. You know, do put 10 percent. Put 10 percent in a savings account if nothing else. Just and that may be hard, and that means you have to go to one less you know, coffee a week and get one less dinner out a week, but it means that down the line, you'll be able to continue to have coffee out. You'll begin to be able to continue to have meals out when you're 60, 70, and 80. Um, so, I mean, simple things like that. In, and the, I, the statistics are mind boggling. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but they're, at least here in the US, and I, I don't know what they do in other countries. I'm sure plenty of other countries and companies do this around the world, but you know, 401ks, 403bs, um, uh, company savings plans where the company will match you. Uh, is one of the best things you can do. It's free money to do that. And there, even in, in the company that I work in, in the business and uh, at the organization um, that I work in, they offer a matching percentage of your, you know, if you put it in a 403B because it's a nonprofit that I work for. So um, uh, I do that because it's free money. If I put in five dollars, they're going to put in another five dollars. So I just got ten dollars. You know, I mean, it, it, and then it's attached to the stock market. So you're, you know, at least making at minimum inflation rates. Um, it just makes sense. So if you have any form of matching plan, um, company print plan uh, that they match the amount that you put in, do it. Do it. It is the dumbest thing in the world to leave that on the table, and you are. Um, playing the, but you're getting more and more risky the later life goes if you aren't doing that. It's free money. So I encourage every single person to do that if they have the opportunity. If your company doesn't do that or you own your own business or whatever, figure out ways that you can invest and save. Get a financial planner. Get, some, you know, spend the extra money. You know, I, I'm not good at like picking all these stocks and like, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. So I pay somebody to help me make good decisions so that you know, hopefully that my wife and I will have a really good nest egg that we'll be able to enjoy our latter years and not be living paycheck or, or you know, in this sense, like month to month, um, you know, having to live on um, uh, Social Security, which who knows if it'll even be around and whatever you have around the world. Um, you don't want to rely on governments. You don't want to rely on handouts to, to um, live your life if at all possible. They're good for safety nets, but that is not something you don't want to bet your life on a safety net and your your retirement and your latter years on a safety net. So um, I just encourage you guys with that. And particularly, it was particularly about that 401k, 403b type of stuff. If your company offers some sort of retirement plan, you know, matching thing, do it for the love of God, please do it so that you will be um, set up to at least have something in your latter years. And so tying in with the fear when fear starts to take hold of my heart, I always run to my loving Heavenly Father who always is taking care of me, looking out for me, and wants to take care and look out for each one of us, each one of you out there watching. And so this is the, the verse of the day that I just want to uh, give you guys here. This is out of Isaiah, 5, uh, sorry, Isaiah 41, 13 and 14. And it says this, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Do not be afraid, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. 
man, is that comforting that God is out there giving us a hand saying, hey, let me grab you. You don't have to do this on your own. I will lift you up. I will rise you up when you feel like you're on the edge and you're like, man, maybe some of the stuff that we talked about today, you're like, dude, I did not do a good job. I, I don't know if I did a good job raising my kids. I don't know if I, I, I'm at a phase in my life where I don't even know if I have the resources to retire ever and am I just gonna be working till I die, you know? That God has a, has an answer, that he loves you, that he cares about you and that he, he is there holding you and wants to help you. Just let him help you. So that's my quick encouragement out of Isaiah. Isaiah is the bomb, uh, chapter 41. All right, gangsters, uh, let's see here. We're gonna look at some stuff on the table here real quick. We haven't done this in a while. This is always fun to do. Um, and I want to let you guys know as well that um, I've been posting up on Facebook and YouTube and everywhere else, but we still have about 75 of our GT patches up on the eBay page. I will have a link below when this goes live if they're still available, otherwise I'll probably either say something or try and fix it or whatever won't have it I'll, I'll put a comment below but we still have some uh, patches they went up uh, on uh, Cyber Monday and uh, posted on Instagram Facebook that's why you guys need to be following there posted on the community part of the YouTube channel so go check them out if you haven't gotten a uh, patch yet I will ship them free anywhere in the world and they are eight dollars a piece so um, super sweet I will start shipping if you've already placed your order I'm waiting through this week Monday basically a week to make sure I get as many orders in before I start knocking them out um, to, to ship them. I'll ship them again. I said anywhere in the world, give it about another week or two before you get them. If you don't get them in about two weeks, then, um, comment back to me and be like, Hey dude, I haven't got my patch and we'll, we'll see what we can do to figure it out, that out and why that hasn't happened. So, uh, don't forget about that. Uh, don't forget about backcountry.com and knock around sunglasses as well. That's another great way to uh, support the, the channel and, um, can help us to continue to do what we do here. So with that, I'll just jump into a couple of quick things here. Um, no, I'm not going to do that one. What do I got here? This one is su I'm super excited about. This is the Streamlight Pro Tac 1L-1 AAA, or sorry, AA. This is a dual-powered, meaning you can use two different power sources, flashlight. It can use a CR123 battery, which will give you the heavier lumens at like 350. And this is designed, which I'm super pumped about, as a tactical flashlight, meaning high, then get ready for strobe, strobe, and then low and it's programmable. So if you wanna change that and move different buttons to different things or different levels to different things, you can loop over for not only on your uh, hat of your, the bill of your hat, but also your pocket, but it will also use a double A battery. So it will drop the power outage. It'll go down to like 170 lumens for high um, versus the 350 with the CR123, but you can swap them in and out, which is awesome. So um, if in a pinch, if your CR123 runs out and it's harder to find that, or it's not laying around, you can throw a double A in there and you still get all the functionality of the flashlight, just lower lumens count, which is pretty sick. Really pumped about that review because coming soon. These will be in the links to Amazon below. Um, next up, this is really cool. I picked this up. I've been looking at them for a while. These are the Magpul, and I can't remember what they're called. Um, these are like waterproof or almost waterproof. DACA, or DACA small pouch. Made in the USA, it's like a polymer material. Uh, these are just some of the things that you can do. Perfect for carrying tools, spare parts, electronic cables, first aid ammunition, uh, let's see here, non-GMO seeds, travel gear, uh, dop kit, stakes um, for cash, let's see here. Yeah, and a bunch of other stuff. So um, it's a polymer fabric, uh, welded uh, corners, YKK, aqua guard, water repellent zipper, um, and a made in the USA with carabiner attachment. So anyway, I've just been looking at them for a while. Just wanted to pick one up, see what it could do for me, see if there was a system or something that I needed. They're about $18 for the small and they'll go all the way up to like a full size that could hold like an iPad and has a screen and stuff. Um, so very, very cool little setup here. I think I might actually use it as like an ammo pouch for my go bag um, and throw my, my ammo in there for it because it's not only waterproof, but it's a simple slim way to carry that ammo and they're, it's heavy duty, it's Magpul, USA made, super cool. So check those out. You can use, they have smaller ones even I think or this might be the smallest one I can't remember anyway lots of cool stuff there of all different sizes for heavy duty like dust and water repellents um, very very cool there uh, yeah got my BCM beanie because I just built out a whole nother BCM rifle so super excited about that my first one was a spikes lower BCM upper this one I decided to go all BCM uh, upper and lower just the, such high quality, mind blowing. Have not taken it to the range yet, but I, I am excited to do so because the first one ran like butter. 
So I'm looking forward to seeing how this baby um, runs and looking forward to that. Let's see what else we got here. So use this little guy. This is an Esbit. This is their lightweight, um, not only fuel stove, but uh, what what is it? Windscreen. So this is like a little uh, aluminum or maybe it's stainless steel. I can't remember, but super lightweight, like ultra, ultra lightweight, ultra, ultra thin, which is pretty cool. Um, set up here with a little three walls. There you go there three walls and then it does have a bottom plate as well and it has the little teeth to hold the alcohol stove so if you have one of those brass alcohol stoves especially from esbit it's designed to click right in here and then your pot sits up above works really well it's it's a really good windscreen it's a really good alcohol stove holder or or also pot raiser so if you have any type of alcohol stove and you need to get your pot above the actual stove you can put it right there and it'll rest so the, we're going to be doing a review on this soon so i really like this. this is my as of yet i've been kind of disappointed with the other other as bits this actually functions pretty well the downside is that this is freaking three pieces four pieces of i think it's aluminum or stainless steel i don't remember maybe it's ultralight stainless steel regardless comes with a little pouch 25 dollars. you've got to be crapping me for this for 25 dollars. are you serious i mean how much does this cost for them to punch out like a nickel i mean come on get 15 dollars. i paid 15 dollars. 10 is should be 10 but $15, there's three par four parts of this little super thin metal. I mean, come on. Seriously, Esbit, they're kind of, I don't know. It works and it does its job, but is, is it $25? I mean, if I knew somebody that had like a punch, I could just have them do it for like nothing. So anyway, that'll be coming out soon um, and doing a review on that. It's taken me longer than I would have liked, but uh, really looking forward to showing you guys my custom build on the BK7 with um, their, what is it, ZR or RZ um, G10 handle scales and then an AZ Welky sheath, links below for AZ Welky. Check them out, they make some of the best sheaths around and they have a lot of uh, in stock sheaths, so you don't have to send your knife over, so that's super cool. But that is coming, and that is a, a great setup there. What else? Um, tr looking forward to trying out these uh, 223, 556 uh, Magpul dummy rounds so that I can start practicing my transitions and uh, jams better, you know, so when the fire, you know, have a buddy load it and have one of these in, in the mag, and then uh, you know having to clear it quickly and, and practicing clearing, that's always important, something good to do. So uh, looking forward to testing that out. And uh, here we go, the, I, I have this for my SIG, and so I asked for it for recently for my birthday, and I got it uh, for my Glock as well. The Safari Land 7TS uh, Duty Gear Holster. Th these are sick holsters, and you can get them for under 50 bucks. You know, Safari Land is a great, great company. They make a lot of really good stuff. And um, what I like about this is not only does it belt carry with a paddle, sorry, a paddle carry and a belt carry option, um, but the design is like one giant piece of polymer that they molded over and then just one really quick release tab. Um, and, and it works really well. It's really smooth and you know, Safari Land makes fantastic quality stuff. So they have uh, several options. Again, I'll have links in the description below for Amazon for that, um, for a lot of different pistols out there. So that would be a really cool added bonus. If you're trying to find like a good polymer a holster without breaking the bank that you want one, I can't remember the levels of retention, but where you just have a little quick thumb tab and it's not like a push, it's like a tab that you hit to release the so it's faster than just a push tab um it, i really like it a lot check it out uh links below and uh at some point i hope to have a review done here soon well there you have it folks i hope this has been informative helpful fun back in the swing of things looking forward to uh what we got coming down the line here uh, i'm working on some interviews i know i keep saying that but there are several interviews that i have lined up i have a friend um, who was born in kuwait he is of pakistani descent um and uh, had to live through Saddam Hussein's invasion in 1991. Um, he was uh, in grade school when that happened. And uh, uh, yeah, has had a very interesting life. Now lives here as a citizen of the United States. Um, and just really cool story that I want to get. My parents have, ha have some really cool stories of a six month bike trip they did uh, right after they got married. So I want to interview them. Just lots of cool stuff going on. Uh, I just got to get it nailed down and do it for us. So stay tuned. Uh, thank you guys for your support. Thank you for watching. Uh, check us out on Instagram, all the social media, uh, throwing up stuff there all the time. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.